Guys, welcome back to another episode of The Pulse. You know what we do every Monday, bringing people in, people who are touring, people who are doing things, hearing their stories. And today we are excited. We've got actor, comedian, so much more. We've got the man, Tracy Morgan, joining us. How are you, sir? What's up, bro? What's good? Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Appreciate you taking the time. Man, I feel like I've created this scenario in my head because Sarah Silverman was on with us last week. And I know you guys did Crank Yankers or SNL, you did the Uber Eats commercial. I've created a scenario in my head where we're helping further you guys already blossoming careers. Can I, can I own that? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure, I've been around for a minute, but sure. So, so we can claim that, yes. Uh, I like been... to think my career is still blossoming. <laughs> All right. That was me trying to figure out a way that I could steal some of that. All of you guys' success. Okay. Um, tell us a little bit, kind of looking through, you talk about your career blossoming, but we like to kind of start um, back a little bit further. How, how did it get started? How did you get into this? Well, my mother's water broke 1960 <laughs> at 525 in the morning, and that's when everything hit the fan. Uh, so you went back a little further than we normally do. I'm telling you, you want to know when it started? It started in 1968 when my mother water broke. So when did the comedy aspect of it get started? I'm telling you, you ain't you don't get into it. It's born in you. Okay. Anybody can do comedy, man. I can tell you how to tell jokes, but are you funny? That's God-given talent. That's just being funny. Richard Pryor was funny. He wasn't just a comedian. Anybody could do comedy, but everybody ain't funny. So when did you, you know, know you? Saying? Yeah, no, clearly. When did that you know you were? That was born in me. My father did was funny in Vietnam. My father was funny in Vietnam, so I get it honestly. I'm just like my dad. Talent. <laughs> did you always know you had it? Yeah. Yeah. I always made people laugh my whole life. I don't remember a time when I didn't. So there wasn't even during the bad times, even during the bad times, good, bad, and ugly. I always made people laugh. That's just my nature. That's my personality. So you, funny is your personality. Was there a period of time when you knew then that funny as your personality could transition to career? No, I didn't see it coming. I was just being me in high school and all. I was just being me. Then one day I saw Martin Lawrence on TV. I saw Eddie Murphy back in the days before Martin Lawrence. I saw them doing it. Eddie's from where I'm from. Eddie made, Eddie made, he made me think it was a possibility because he comes from the Bush succession of Brooklyn like me. And then Martin Lawrence made it a reality when he put me on the show. I actually saw that. So I was sitting there watching the game uh, in between hoping my Sixers could get a win. Um, so I went ahead, saw that, saw you guys together. Is that... A lot of comedians will talk about that brotherhood. Now, that's real? That's a fraternity that has existed through your whole career and maintained? Absolutely. When, when comedians have beef, I don't understand it because we are not rappers. We don't do that. We bring joy and laughter to people's lives. That's what it's about. But I don't do this for me. I do this because I'm in service to you and everybody in the audience. I'm in service. That's the only way to get into heaven. You got to keep yourself in service. So when I do comedy, I like to say I'm in service. And those guys, all of you guys now, and I joked about the kind of the blossoming career, but this extremely established career, all of you guys have that level of success and still that fraternity, still have each other's back, still support. Yeah, you've seen it. You've seen it at the Nick game. We love each other, man. Not everybody is funny. Not everybody's funny. But people who are funny and confident, they don't have no need to be jealous or envious or rivalries. And everybody needs a Joe Frazier, Muhammad Ali in their life. I like they, I guess they like to pit comedians against each other now. We don't, I don't, I've never had beef with anyone. I get along with everybody. Do you feel like- If I don't got, not, I don't got nothing nice to say about you, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. I'll keep it to myself. Okay. Do you feel like there's a responsibility with that level of success and with the people who have kind of been the brothers with you to do it for the next generation coming along? Absolutely. 
when I find someone that's worthy for me to pass it down, then I will do my part. Martin Lawrence found it in me. But more than being funny and being a comedian, you have to be a genuine good person. Mm -hmm. And that's what I look for. That's what I look for. You can't use the, the comedy and the mic as a bully pulpit. You shouldn't. You are here to heal and not hurt. And laughter is the best medicine. Coming up next on The Pulse, did he ever expect that his life would be filled with all of this? I will not let this go to my head. This goes to my heart. And I'm thankful. And I, I, I thank the, the Lord for this. Because I remember going back to Martin as one of those breaks when, when we realized what you knew, your career, that you were that funny guy and put you on TV. Why do you think Martin did that? Why do you think he saw that in you? Because like, I'm, <laughs> I'm funny. Because I'm funny. He doesn't mess with anybody. He only messes with the best. If I wasn't funny, I wouldn't have been on the show. So is that what you consider the, the big break, the first break? Uh, yes. Uh, you had Uptown Comedy Club that was on Fox, and that, that they gave me a shot. And I think that was the first break. Uptown Comedy Club on Fox TV. That was the first break. And then uh, after that, I did Martin. Then I did The Run. I did a Apollo, Apollo Comedy Hour. And I did all those things. And I guess my funny fell on the right ears. Then I got a shot at Saturday Night Live and I got the show. And then Saturday Night Live, your own show, 30 Rock, all of those different things. So you've been funny your whole life. Did you ever think it could get to this? Were you surprised at this level of success? Well, what is this? What do you consider this? I don't see it that way. I live with me for 54 years. <laughs> so it's every day for me. So what I consider, what I consider I let, this. I will, I will not let this go to my head. This goes to my heart. And I'm thankful. And I, I, I thank the, the Lord for this. Because it all goes to him. So this what, is his plan. This is his plan. This is also international success and exposure and a voice, you know, and the ability to do the types of things that you're talking about. So even giving the glory to God and the respect that you are paying to everybody and, and being grateful, <clears throat> excuse me, did you believe that it could ascend to this level of success? No, this level no of way, no way, man, no way. No one ever sees this, not even you, where you at? We don't see this coming, but what keeps us humble is that we don't forget where we come from. That's what I have been through. That's what I do know, what I've been through, the past. Mm -hmm. I know about welfare, I know about food stamps, I know about all of that stuff. You see the movie Claudine? That was my life. Yeah. Welfare people coming to the house is hot. My father having to hide in the. I've been through that. I've, that's what keeps me humble. Just never forgetting where I've come from. And what, what people say that comedy is a form of therapy. No, no, it's not. I love comedy. Comedy is fun to me. When I need when I need the reminded therapy about where I come from, I just go back to my old neighborhood. And remember, that's where I could end up back if I don't check myself before I wreck myself. So I stay on point about everything. My family comes first, my kids come first. What's my kids come first. What was interesting about that to me and sharing that story, and you talk about the movie that was your life and you do a lot of- Well, uh, I like to say it's not a story, but a testimony. Right, but, you're, testimony. You, but you share it. You share that testimony. You talk to people about, you make but them laugh. I know laugh. Oh, I couldn't have made it without God. I never would have made it without God in my life. I never would have made it. I'd have been going a long time ago. It would have never got to this point. Somebody's looking out for me. I was born and raised in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. You know, Bed-Stuy, do or die, take the girl, kill the guy. I was there. A lot of my friends was murderers. I just thank the Lord I've survived that and I didn't go down that route. I had comedy. Just like my father with the Vietnam. Music is what saved my dad. Comedy is what saved me. You give the glory to God, you are grateful, but you share the testimony with the rest of us. Why? Why is it so important that you tell those stories? 
Because I know somewhere in there, you can identify and relate with it. Mm -hmm. So you say to yourself, is that me? And then nine times out of 10, we all can identify and relate with it because we've all been through it. You've been through it, I've been through it, but this this is, thank the Lord, the, the results. The results is us doing what we're doing. You interviewing me, me being interviewed by, by, interviewed by you. I thank the Lord, me and you are both where we are. Hey, listen, I will, I will co-sign that part. So I appreciate that part. Absolutely. Coming up, he says he was born funny, but life's challenges, they made his life into his testimony. He didn't take my funny from me. He didn't take my funny from me. Through all of that, he didn't take my funny from me. I feel funnier than ever. Do you feel more grateful than ever with everything you've been through? I'm gonna let you answer that. What up, y'all? This is your girl, Vivica A. Fox, and you are watching The Pulse with a very handsome Bill Anderson. Welcome to The Pulse with Bill Anderson. Now, you got to sign a release that says they can't just make that the new voice <laughs> of the show. <laughs> you know that, right? ...through things. You said that you were always the funny guy. You knew that from birth when your mom's water broke. Were Dude, you I got hit by Walmart. Let's, let's, let's say this. I got hit by a Walmart truck, yes, and sir. I'm still doing this. I'm still here doing this. My friend died. His neck was broke so bad, his face was on his back. I broke every bone in my face and I had traumatic brain injury. My femur was crushed and I'm still here with you talking. Did you, before all of that, did you feel the he same funny, energy? Man. He didn't take my funny from me. He didn't take my funny from me. Through all of that, he didn't take my funny from me. I feel funnier than ever. Do you feel more grateful than ever with everything you've been through? I'm gonna let you answer that. What you think? I would. I would Absolutely. Think so. yeah. Imagine you being in that situation, wouldn't you be? Well, one hundred percent. There you 100%. go. One hundred percent. There you go. When I was in heaven, I seen some people that I know. I seen Biggie Smalls. He looked good. Lost weight. You are coming to Philadelphia, May twelfth. Uh, at the Parks Casino. I'm, bring, I'm bringing truckloads of funny with me. <laughs> truckloads. So I don't have to ask that question. What's a Tracy Morgan comedy show going to look like May 12th? Like you've been looking like funny, funny, funny. I've been giving it to you for years, bro. Almost 30 years. Giving it to you. You know what it is. When my fans come to see me, they know what they get ready to get. This is an experience. This is the Tracy Morgan experience. It isn't a show. We've transcended that. This is an experience. You're going to love, you're going to love. And I want you to dig. I just don't have people giggling. I hit you in the gut with the funny. <laughs> Listen, you got to be sitting here. I had, a woman, I had a woman this year pee on herself. Had a puddle under her table, pee on herself. I had, had that done a few times because I go for the gut. I'm not tickling nobody. We are just too old to be tickled. I like to get him in the gut, deep down laughter. You know why you get that, how you get there? You tell the truth. And everybody can identify and relate with that. I can relate to that with this conversation right now because I'm sitting here trying to do an interview, wiping my nose because I'm laughing at some of the stuff. It's real, man. <laughs> it's you real. Said. Uh, you're holding on to the professionalism of the interview going, ah, oh, man, I'm, I'm doing an interview. Am I supposed to be laughing about all of this? Ah, oh, man, let it go, man. You can't hold that in. I'm telling the truth. I don't know how to be nothing else. I just don't know how. I got to say Trey. You have, say Trey. you have now, you know, grateful, success, glory to God, you know, still here after the things that you've been through. You, you still, I mean, I, it seems like you've answered I was on 30 Rock with a kidney transplant. Kidney transplant on 30 Rock. I've been through a lot of wars, man, a lot of battles, and I'm still here being funny. A lot of people would have quit a long time ago with all that kind of trauma in their life. Yeah. Do you think people know all of that? Like, I, I was preparing for this interview, and I knew obvious stuff. The stuff you were talking about with Walmart, I knew some of those things. I knew about some of your background. I didn't know all of the things that you had gone through and still sitting there smiling and making other people laugh. Do you Yo, think you know why? You, first of all, you should have asked somebody. They would have told you. Second of all, 
When you think you're doing bad, there's always people out there doing worse. There's people out there with nobody to love and nobody loved them, sleeping on the street. And loneliness is a sad affair. I'm thankful. I got beautiful children around me. I got a lot of friends. I'm rich. <laughs> I don't just need money. I'm rich. I got friends. That's what Bob Marley said to me, man. You, you rich when you have friends. I know billionaires with no friends. Lonely. What's the point in having all that kind of money? You done lost your mind. I thank the Lord that I got over my traumatic brain injury. Now, I don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow, but I know today I feel great. I feel funny. And I can't wait to get to where you at and make people laugh. I get off on that. Seeing people smile and laugh, that's awesome to me. You very clearly still love this. <laughs> you just doing this because you enjoy the well, tour. Walmart gave me so much money, I don't got to do this no more. But I do it because I love it. I do it because I love it. Next on The Pulse, you know, we always have to ask, how do you use your voice for good? Blessing people with uh, inspiration. Blessing people with the love. Blessing people with the forgiveness. So May 12th, you will be here at the parks. We go through the discussion on The Pulse after having some fun <laughs> and having the different discussions. Uh, we end each segment with a concept called use your voice for good. We'd like to hear what that means to people. What does that mean to you? Uh, blessing people with uh, inspiration. Blessing people with the love. Blessing people with the forgiveness. And just hope, uh, asking the Lord to bless me. Tracy Morgan, I appreciate you. I appreciate the fact that you're on tour. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us and and share your story and making me laugh to the point where my nose is running. In I'm the saying middle. story is a testimony. Sharing your testimony. I appreciate that. We will see you May 12th. Yo, you better come to my show. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not sure that. what you're going to say. I know that much. You better come <laughs> to the show. I love you, man. I love you back, man. I appreciate you. Continued success and testimony, and we will see you soon. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. All right, man. Take care. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching The Pulse with the amazing Tracy Morgan. And I say that about him for a lot of reasons. This man has had tremendous level of success and tremendous levels of challenge that he says that he has overcome. And I appreciate him taking the time to share some of those stories with us, giving us a look at some of the things that he has dealt with and continuing to inspire people through that journey. If you would like to hear the podcast, you can go all places where podcasts are available. Hit subscribe so you get the notification every Monday. You can head over to YouTube and do a little search to try to see some of the past episodes you may not have seen. Some really great guests that I believe you will enjoy. And of course, you can always hit me up on social media at Bill A. Fox 29. I love to hear from you. And make sure you stay with us next Monday as we're joined by R&B smooth crooner Raheem Devon. You know, always been curious about music and different and fascinated with certain artists like Bob Marley. You know, Marvin Gaye, uh, Prince, uh, just to name a few, you know, uh, who all had huge influences over my career. You know, not just on the, on the, on the side of making like intimate music, love songs, records that speak to intimacy, but also, you know, from a socially uh, conscious, being socially aware uh, standpoint as well. I leave you today as I always do, reminding you whenever you can, use your voice for good and have a good one. <laughs>